What's up everybody, Chris here, Power Company Climbing. When we were first building the machine shop and wanted to find holds and equipment, tools that would allow us to translate the strength and power that we were gaining in here into our outdoor boulders or routes, one of the walls I kept bumping up against was footholds that really simulated how you use feet outside. Most of the footholds that you can buy or that are used in a commercial space are pretty large. They're pretty high profile. And it seemed to me that any of the bad feet that I could come up with for a steep wall mostly just meant that they were slopier and slopier, which ultimately you use in an entirely different way than you do a small in cut edge, which we find very often outside. Now, this isn't to say that those sloping footholds are inherently bad. It's great to learn how to apply pressure through those type of feet, but we also need those tiny little edges. So I teamed up with Escape Climbing to come up with a line of footholds that would more accurately represent how we climb outside. We created our line of inductors specifically to force some foot positions that we often find outside that we aren't often finding inside because of the shape of most feet. Now these are two of our sets. We have four total. These are the sets made for steeper walls, so the inductor 45 and the inductor 60. And one of the interesting things you'll see is that we've put these wings on the sides of many of them. And that's specifically so that if you have a foothold on the wall and you're trying to come at it from the side, you can't just edge right on the good part. You're going to have to turn your foot out to get into that good part. Again, something we find outside really often. Now, the 60s are obviously a little bigger, but still going to be challenging on a 45, especially if they're put out to the side and the climber has to come at them from the side and really have to turn the heel out in order to get the toe on the usable part of the foothold. And these are only partial sets. I got a little antsy and had to put a few up on the wall already. So, And each set is going to come with some more basic feet so that you can approach from all sorts of angles as well as feet that are going to force you to be a little more precise and to put your foot in more interesting positions. All right, let's go put some of these on the wall and talk about how we're going to use them. Now, there are a few things to take into account when using these feet. So here I've got an open space where I'm not going to be adding another handhold. And I've got two feet facing basically the same direction. This one, an inductor 10, I believe. Uh, so a really tiny, horrible foot. Now, I'm going to add a larger inductor facing the opposite way so that you know, climbers from all directions can use the feet. Now, one of the things that you have to keep in mind, sort of first things first, is be really careful when getting in and screwing these in. You don't want to tighten them down too much. They're very thin, going to be easy to break. Now, the reason I'm putting the foot at this angle is so that climbers from this direction when coming in are going to have to turn that heel out and it's going to be harder to use than this foot where they can just smush their entire foot onto the hold. And climbers from this angle are going to have to be a little more precise due to the wings not allowing you to just slop your foot on. They're going to sort of reduce the, the surface area you get on the hold if you just are really sloppy. So you're going to have to turn your heel out just a little bit. Now, one of the things that I like to think about, because they're very directional holds when I'm, when I'm putting them on, 
if I turn it in the direction that a climber is going to be using it from most often, and for instance, this is the middle of our wall, so climbers from both sides are going to be using it, then it makes the foothold a little better if I turn it in the direction that they're going to be pushing or pulling. And with these, because of the wings, I can leave them more horizontal. Um, just a straight down push foot is going to be easy, but from either side, the climber is going to have a little bit tougher time using this foot. So near the center of the wall, especially, I feel really comfortable leaving these as straight down pulling or down pushing feet so that climbers on both sides can have a little more trouble using it. So that's the basics of our inductor series of footholds, how we use them, how we think about them when we're setting with them, beyond just the fact that they're a much smaller edge than you're going to find in most indoor footholds. Now we have four sets, 10s, 20s, 45s, and 60s. We use all of the sizes on our 45 degree wall, However, the tens are extremely challenging at that angle and do come with a few that are meant specifically for kickers or on volumes as smear feet. So consider the level that you're climbing at, the angle of your wall, and how challenging you want it to be when you're choosing which inductor is going to go onto your wall. We also have two other types of feet. Diodes, which are a, a geometric small edge that kind of has a half polish on them. So the texture you would find on a dual tex hold is the entire foothold. There's no friction beyond that. We also have resistors, which are uh, a more of a smear type foot and have a full polish. So very slippery. Both of these feet are specifically meant to mimic slippery, polished limestone and granite to help you get comfortable standing on those tiny, slippery feet before you go outside to your project. It can be really, really helpful if that's a specific need for you. You can check them all out at powercompanyclimbing.com slash holds and find the feet that are going to help you transfer your skills from in the gym to real rock.